Good afternoon and welcome to Gentleman Octopus. This is Behind the Answer. This is our first segment where we're going to discuss some of the cool things and the cool stories that we learned while doing research for Gentleman Octopus Trivia. That's probably the best part of our job is learning all of these things about the answer and then being able to bring it to you fine people. Yeah, and this week we're going to talk about two people, actually. Um, the first of which came up this week. We're going to be talking about Susan Bennett, who's better known as the voice of Siri. And we will also be discussing um, last week's Black Polymath, Mr. Gordon Parks. So let's first... Let's get started. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Um, so Susan Bennett, she didn't know when she was recording that she was providing the voice for what would become Siri. Had to be a bit of a shock there when you're uh, when yeah. you're at the supermarket and you hear your voice. It's just so omnipresent now. Yeah. Can you imagine that just that one off gig that you never thought anything about? It's like the guy who, had, who made the marimba ringtone, and now everybody has the marimba <laughs> ringtone. Yeah. So Susan said that she recorded in July of 2005. She was actually working with three different engineers, none of whom were Apple engineers. The engineers like created this project, and then Apple developed the project. But she recorded for four hours a day, five days a week. That's putting in the hard yards. So maybe there. calling it a one-off, like I did earlier, is <laughs> probably not something that's a. It was a full-time thing. Yeah, it was yeah, a whole thing. You don't forget about that. But she said that what happened then was Apple developed the project, and they um, they took what they called concatenations, which were just combinations of every possible sound in the English language and created a program that would respond with created language. Okay. It's, it's pretty cool. And I found out this, and I can't believe I've never asked the question before, but Siri is a Norwegian word. Ah. And one of the audio engineers was Norwegian. Siri means beautiful woman who guides you to victory. That's excellent. Yeah, right? I mean... That sounds like the best football manager of all time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and Susan herself has said that, like, she considers Siri less, like, beautiful woman who guides you to victory and more like that feisty voice that tells yeah. you where to go. She really considers Siri to have a personality yeah. of her own. I mean, you and I both know, if you talk to Siri or you talk to other AI voices... That they can get a bit of a tune. They can get snippy. And, yeah. and I love it, personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, Susan Bennett's quite interesting. She was a backup singer for Roy Orbison and Burt Bacharach. I have not found, like, discography data to yeah. tell me on which songs she performed. Gotta get some of those isolated vocals. Yeah, right? I pick, pick it up. Wait a minute. Is that Siri I'm hearing? <laughs> yeah. On Oh, Pretty Take Woman? Pretty Woman left. Who Guides You to Victory? <laughs> Take a left turn. <laughs> Anything you want. Yeah. Yep. You got it. Um, Susan was also previously married to Kurt Bennett, who has an odd gentleman octopus tie-in. Yeah. Um, he used to play in the NHL for the Atlanta Flames, a former gentleman octopus mm -hmm. answer line. Uh, Atlanta Flames are always interesting because they were named the Atlanta Flames, obviously because of the Sherman's march to the sea. But when they went to Calgary, they are like, that's already got a brand. <laughs> Screw it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and Stan Peters was taken. Yeah, Stan Peters was taken by the CFL team, and that's basically what Calgary is known as. Yeah. Is kind of the rodeo capital yes, of Canada. Yes, absolutely. That is what they do and what their DNA is. Well, what's interesting about Kurt Bennett is it's not like he was just in the NHL. Yeah. He had a 10-year career, and he scored more than 120 goals. Yeah. He also got into a couple fracases. <laughs> Oh more, my than, God. more than his oh, fair dude. feel. That brings me to the next thing I really, really want to talk about is he has the most bonkers YouTube channel. It's like, a, like, it's like Don Cherry's Rock of Oh my goodness. Hockey. It's part that, it's part HGTV, and it's part like what would become Unsolved Mysteries because you get really grainy home footage somehow shot in 2020 um That's you, get, to do. you get short one minute videos of water features and backyard waterfalls that i don't know if he makes them or if he's just like an aficionado it but, sounds like robin williams character from one hour photo really oh god <laughs> i see but, these because the beauty yeah. Overtook me. Oh my god. But yeah, you get to see you get to see the waterfalls, you get to see the grainy home footage, 
and then just mix in there old fights with the 1976 <laughs> Philadelphia Flyers. Oh, the Broad Street Bullies! Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there were some bench-clearing brawls, of course. Well, absolutely. They used to have the healthy scratches fight in the in the late <laughs> 70s. There's fights up in the stands. Our mom and dad were uh, season ticket holders in the early 80s for the Capitals, and it was not uncommon when they played the Flyers that there were bench-clearing brawls in the stands. <laughs> yeah. Everybody on the ice is they paired, paired up. up. Yeah. Everybody's got a dance partner. And then in the stands, the people who are on the team but aren't dressed in uniform who are either like coaches or, as you said, people who are scratched <laughs> from the coaches lineup. coaches are fighting in the stands. They're like, okay, well, us too, I guess. Well, we must for the team. <laughs> but yes, that is, um, that that is Susan Bennett. That is Kurt Bennett. That is incredibly interesting pairing there that is the behind the scenes of the siri question and the next person we're going to talk about you did not get to talk about because you were feeling a little bit under the weather yeah no last last week week. um last week i just got like stricken with um like sudden what felt like fever but passed um what felt like nausea but passed it was it felt almost like just overheating yeah and uh it was not a lot of fun but tj really took it home in the uh, fifth round. So thank you very much for doing that, Teach. Yeah. Um, and the next person we want to talk about is the subject of our Life Magazine question. Yes. Um, as we mentioned, this man, uh, Mr. Gordon Parks, worked with Alfred Eisenstadt and Margaret Bork White as part of Life Magazine. But really, um, him being a fantastic photographer... Kind of tip of the iceberg for him. It, it really is, yeah. I mean, he's definitely most known as a photographer. Yeah. But if you just stop at photographer, you're missing out on a lot. Uh, he's also an auteur. He uh, mm-hmm. uh, was a man who wore many different hats. Absolutely. So the first thing I want to start with um, is his connection to literature. He was a novelist. He wrote two novels, I believe. His first was a semi-autobiographical novel in 1969 called The Learning Tree. It was made into a film the following year, and it was one of the first films ever selected for the National Film Registry's preservation list. Oh, absolutely awesome. Right? Right? I mean, and then speaking of like... When was it uh, When was it selected for the National Registry? That I need to look up again, but it was like yeah. one of the inaugural class when the National Film Registry started to preserve films. Yeah. That was one of the first ones selected. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. Um, another connection that he has to multimedia, not just books, not just films, is that He directed the 1984 television film called Solomon Northup's Odyssey. And, of course, you recognize that name. From 12 Years a Slave. From 12 Years a Slave. That was the first film or television adaptation of 12 Years a Slave. So well well before Steve McQueen. Steve McQueen's was only the second. Yeah. It's only been adapted twice. Yeah. Yeah, that was a that was a good class that beat out that year. That mm-hmm. was a, that was the gravity class where Quarome won for uh, best director. Was it? Yeah, I lost an Oscars pool on that. Never been so happy to lose an Oscars pool though, because <laughs> I was like, they're just gonna pick this one. And, and... Oh my goodness, have you seen the um, the whitewashed movie posters from abroad? Um, yeah. I don't remember the particular country um, who used this movie poster to advertise Twelve Years a Slave. But it shows Chiwetel Ejiofor at like one eighth scale running across the frame, and then the rest of the poster is a large headshot of Brad Pitt. Yeah, it's like okay, all right, cool. So we're we're going with this, huh? Yeah, that's but, somebody who watched it, saw Brad Pitt, and was like, "Well, that's it. Clearly, he's the star of the piece." Yeah, but um, Gordon Parks was certainly not of that camp. He highlighted. Yeah black stories um after his career defining work with life magazine he started to do other really cool things too like in addition to being an author being a photographer being a director director. (laughs) he composed a piano sonata and a symphony and um he attended the march on washington for freedom and jobs in 1963 the original i have a dream march and um after that after the passing of um, Reverend King, he also composed a ballet called, I believe called Martin, which was based yeah. on MLK's life. So, I mean, just the amount of things this man yeah. has done. Just, I mean, he also directed Shaft in 1971. <laughs> like, the 
biggest yeah. movie from the black exploitation genre, which he's like credited with creating. That's Gordon Parks. Yeah. He also directed the sequel. He was in Dude. the Samuel L. Jackson one, too. Oh, yeah. yeah. The, the recent one? The, the 2000 one. Okay, yeah. yeah, not, yeah. not the really recent one where they have, like, the three no, generations no. Um, of Shaft. Parks, I think, passed in 2006. Okay. But in the 2000 Shaft, he, like, played a guy uh, just, just playing chess, and uh, Samuel L. Jackson's character makes a comment to him. Nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's incredibly interesting how uh, he was kind of the forerunner for black stories. Absolutely. I mean, if he was, you, look, you look at Shaft's obviously a big deal in the black community, one of the first big black action stars, really, you could say. I, I would agree. And I would the, definitely agree. And then he also um, he also adapted 12 Years a Slave into Solomon Northrop's Adventures, and that became a Best Picture winning film and was a huge milestone for the Academy. Oh yeah, there's no way McQueen doesn't look at that television film and, you and know, see that tip of the hat inspired. to Gordon Parks. Yeah. Tip of the hat to Gordon Parks there. That's incredibly interesting. I did not know anything about Gordon Parks when I was uh, reading the question. And, uh, yeah, and the, the, other thing, interesting the other thing I got written down on my hand here is that uh, he co-founded Essence Magazine. It is, um, I believe, number three right now in terms of circulation amongst black-centric magazines. It is engineered toward black women, and it is now celebrating its 50th anniversary. Wow. Which, I mean... Think about I, starting a black centric you know magazine what? I 50 think, years ago. I think actually um, Essence Magazine outlasted life. That's interesting. I think it did, or at least until the 1976 stoppage when life stopped um, so producing. So the essence of life was bigger than life <laughs> itself. <laughs> yeah, um, Essence is, I'm not sure if it entirely beat it in terms of like its publication run, Yeah, but it's up there. Yeah, that's it's a, up there. That's a hell of a run. Man. That's a hell of a run. So, Gordon Parks is incredible at just about everything he does. Um, and the the very last thing I'll kind of give you all as homework, if you want to check it out, is watch the video for Kendrick Lamar's song, Element. Because so many of the scenes are cinematographically... Got that one. Oh, nice. Got that one. Nice. <laughs> are cinematographically similar to the way that Parks framed his shots. And some of them are quasi recreations of famous I'm, Gordon Parks. I'm sure that's not an accident. Kendrick no. does his homework on a no. lot of no. some of his music videos and stuff are just fantastic mm -hmm. works of art. And I mean, we, we could get on Kendrick and talk for another yeah. fifteen minutes, but <laughs> but I, I mean, we'll wrap it up there. <laughs> All right. Well, I, I hope you have enjoyed being part of Behind the Answers and being privy to some of the things we figured out while uh, creating these questions. Yeah. We should be back next week with another couple, either from previous weeks or from this next week's set, that we want to talk about. And thank you once again for listening, and tune in to The Gentleman Octopus Monday at 9 o'clock. Thank you, everybody.